By popular request, let's take a look at Snowdrop. I suppose it was inevitable since after you talk about Double Rainbow, you have to talk about Snowdrop, which is odd. Besides the fact that they came out in about the same week, they're pretty much opposites on every end of the scale. Double Rainbow wanted to make you laugh. Snowdrop wants to make you feel. Double Rainbow uses the show's canon characters. Snowdrop barely uses them at all. Double Rainbow was hyped as hell, and Snowdrop came from nowhere. Double Rainbow was way too flawed for me to recommend, and Snowdrop, well, let's see if they're total counterparts. Let's get the animation out of the way. Once again, things are a little stilted. In fact, even more so than Double Rainbow. But still not to the point of being distracting. It's alright. While we're talking about presentation though, there's one thing that really sticks out, and that's the background music. It really sells the whole heart-wrenching mood of the episode, and I'll elaborate more on that. It starts with an opening narration. Celestia is talking about how amazing the first winter snow is. She goes on to talk about how some people don't appreciate snow. It's very poetic, I must admit. They definitely have the mood established. We have a flashback to presumably some time before the thousand years ago. We see in on a class of Pegasi learning about the snow and why it's needed. I'll also say that I'm not too keen on the voice acting in this episode. And, uh, uh, yeah. Wherever it is, they need to hurry up and go get the front. It's freezing. While the actors have much better direction, most of them don't seem to have much experience. Once again, it's not a distraction, but it could be better. Then we cut to my main problem with Snowdrop, and that's the character of Snowdrop herself. Before you say anything, let me explain. Snowdrop is a little girl with a disability, specifically blindness. She's timid, she's bullied, she has to walk alone in the storm, and she immediately has your sympathy. Let's ignore the obvious logical problem of a blind Pegasus unguided in a floating city and focus on why this was not a bad choice, but a lazy one. Snowdrop is designed to pull out your heartstrings, not from what she does, but from what she is. The whole animation is basically saying, she's a poor blind girl, feel sorry for her. It feels manipulative. Scratch that. It is manipulative. The entire class is instructed to make some project for an upcoming celebration, and the teacher asks Snowdrop what her project and her partner is. She's unable to answer because she hasn't started on it and she doesn't have a partner. The other kids start, well, not whispering, talking about how they don't want to work with Snowdrop. The other kids don't like Snowdrop. Feel sorry for her. Snowdrop tells the teacher that she's working alone and her project is a surprise. The teacher bids everyone away and tells them to watch out for the blizzard. Be careful going home. I know you know your way, but the last blizzard of the year is always the worst. Even if she does know her way home, I don't think it's a smart idea to let a blind girl walk home alone in a blizzard in a city in the sky. Oh, by, by the way, Snowdrop needs to walk home in a blizzard all alone. Feel sorry for her. So Snowdrop sits on a cloud and starts crying, calling herself useless. Yep, she's got self-esteem issues. Feel sorry for her. She thinks that if she goes to present her project, then the princesses will laugh at her. Then she has a flashback for some reason. She's sitting on a cloud with her mother. Her mother is explaining the stars and telling her to listen to the twinkle, but Snowdrop wishes that she could see them. She's blind! Feel sorry for her! Then Snowdrop's mother tells her that she's special, because only her wings and her hooves are gentle enough to figure out the size of a cloud without denting it, for some reason. And Snowdrop hears the twinkles. Back to the current day, Snowdrop also finds the twinkles useless because she can't wish on them. That doesn't stop her from trying to wish that she could actually do something for once. You get it by now, don't you? She cries a tear that turns into ice and picks it up. She tears out a feather from her wing and turns that piece of ice into a snowflake, the very first one. Eventually, she gets called inside. The next morning, Snowdrop comes to the celebration to present her project. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Feel sorry for her. Princess Celestia wants to see her project. The other kids sort of make fun of her, and Snowdrop gives a very sentimental description of the snow and winter. It seems to touch Luna. The princess is asked to see it and asks Snowdrop make some more of them. The next snowfall was the best one yet, with the snow behaving and actually bringing joy. We cut to 1,000 years later, where Celestia and Luna are debating on releasing the last snowflake Snowdrop made. And they do, because that's what Snowdrop would have wanted. Yeah, I'm actually still recommending Snowdrop. Not a must-see, not even a strong recommendation, just a normal recommendation. If you like this kind of stuff, go see it. Why? After all, I said that everything about the character of Snowdrop was designed to make you feel sorry for her and her appearance to how the world treated her, and I called it a lazy choice. It wanted to be heartwarming in the cheapest way possible. Here's the thing though, it actually kinda worked. It actually managed to push some emotions, I may have got misty-eyed. Like I said in my previous video, criticism is about being unbiased as possible, and this is one of the harder parts of being a critic. I don't want to be too hard on this. I mean, it's impossible to hate the character of Snowdrop, and that's really the whole problem. Characters should be liked or hated based on what they do, not what they are, or even what happens to them, really. I also have a hard time believing that the whole world would be so against a little blind girl. Okay, so it was only a class, but I'd at least 
thought that the school teacher would have said something about it. Snowdrop is definitely not a bad character, but it would be a lot better if she was more dynamic, or at least wasn't designed to elicit so much sympathy. There's a huge difference between sympathizing with a character and empathizing with a character. I said you were supposed to feel proud of Twilight and Magical Mystery Cure. That's because we saw all the obstacles that she overcame over 65 episodes. You're supposed to feel sorry about Snowdrop because she's blind and bullied and she feels useless. We don't see how she seems useless. The kids in the class just tell us that. Twilight could control overcoming all of her obstacles. Snowdrop could not control becoming blind. Like I said, I don't want to be too hard on this. I don't think anyone does really.